uh, Ceremony Monday at the Soldiers and Sailors Monument on Riverside Drive. Ripping DVDs over the holiday, okay. No, no steaks. Dennis and I pretty much uh, just eat chicken, counting sheep. Sue the writer, hey, hey. <laughs> Studying for a urine test. Yeah, that's hard to do. Well, that's a nice monitor. You know, what, what set is that? Going back to the cabin. Oh, only you saw that. that. That's that's a preview of my my setup for the end of show. But uh, we're, we're, the the chat room's not going to see that until uh, the end of oh, the show. Oh, okay. And oh, okay. Very good. While you're oh, reminding okay. me, I'm going to allow the chat room to see the. Tri All right. So now the tricaster's on the chat. I'm almost ready to go. Hi. Right, very good. <laughs> Oh, great. Valve said, I like the shirt. It's what Satan would wear to a luau. Where do you get Satan out of palm trees? Match game promo poster I posted on Twitter. Oh, I did see that. Yeah, that was great. Clean my house. Oh. Foist on... <laughs> Foist on the chat room. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have Franks and sauerkraut. Oh, I love Franks and sauerkraut. Oh, my God. Me too. Haven't, haven't, and mustard. Ha now that Must you've oh. said that, I'm gonna have, I, it's been years and years and years since I've made that. But now you that you've what? mentioned it, it, it sounds like a great day, great, great treat. Also, uh, Frugal Fred should know this. Um, I was once, we had a big bag of Frankfurter rolls and we ran out of Frankfurters. And, and I thought... You know, I bet a lot of mustard, because I put on a lot of mustard. I bet a lot of mustard and a lot of sauerkraut on a hot dog bun is not going to be bad. And it was damn good. I didn't miss the Frank that much. I mean, I prefer it with the Frankfurter, but <laughs> Martron says, my sauerkraut is named so, 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 so it's a sauerkraut sandwich. <laughs> yeah, exactly. With mustard. With mustard. With mustard. Sauerkraut sandwich without mustard is nothing. Ah. It's just sauerkraut on bread. But you throw in the mustard. Okay. And then you got something. We're ready, ready? Ready, 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 ready. Yeah, I. Uh, wow, let's yes. See. Can I see myself? Okay, I can see myself, so that means we're ready. Um, and the recordings are going. And that's an important step in this process is making sure that I actually push the red buttons and they record. All right. So let me slate this thing and we'll, if you're ready, are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Then this is the 28th day of May. All right. So Gizfiz episode 478 recorded Saturday, May 28th, 2022 begins in three, two. Ladies and gentlemen. It's time for. <laughs> That's not what it's time Laughter. for. Laughter. Yeah. In three, two. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for. It's the Giz Fizz with the Giz Whiz. It's kind of like Cheese Whiz. It's the Giz Fizz. And now your host. Matt, Mattis Ryder, and the guest with Dick DiBartolo. Welcome to regular, old-fashioned Giz Fizz. And the Hoppies are here. And we're going to have Chat Room Celebrity of the Week. Volunteers, step up. Okay, crickets, even on a holiday weekend, we get crickets. Uh, okay, we're going to do photos from George Davis, that you caption. We're going to play match game. We're going to do another one of those uh, Guinness Book of World Record foodies, funky foodie things. You're going to do a snappy answer to a stupid question that we find in Al Jaffe's book. 
And we'll have some um, Memorial Day beer commercials, too. So it'll be great fun. Uh, the red shirt looks marvelous under the black and white. Uh, but thank you for noticing. Uh-uh. And it is the... Um, one, uh, it's too much to unbutton the whole shirt. It is Little Shelter, uh, a, a, a no-kill shelter that we support. And who gets almost all the all the gadgets that I have no use for after I show them, okay? And companies have been very... If I show something really expensive, you know, like a hundred bucks or something... Uh, I always call the company and say, listen, instead of sending this back, can this go to a no-kill animal shelter for one of their uh, bazaars or auctions? And no one has ever turned down that offer. <laughs> also, sometimes they don't want it back because I asked one person and they said, thank God, if you send it back, we have to have so many forms to fill out for a return of a lend-out just Tell them it was stolen. Uh, okay, so let's uh, let me get George's list. Bum, bum. Okay, photo number one. Oh my word! Oh my God! Operating room. Fortunately, we don't see the patient, but we see doctors and uh, at least one nurse. Maybe they're all doctors, all in green, lots of instruments on the tray. And your caption is, whatever you want it to be, whatever the scene suggests. Uh, <laughs> Bleep Blurb says, note to sell, steal everything. Uh, remove wrenched ankle. Uh, what's that in there? <laughs> That's funny. Oops, wrong organ. Where are my teeth? Uh, okay, who forgot the anesthesia? Uh, anesthesia. Replacing, <laughs> replacing the battery in an iPhone. That's very funny. Nurse, have you seen my watch? <laughs> Where's his heart? Doctor, the Windows update. Operation did not go well. You guys are very funny with these. Uh, do not let Kramer drop in. Oh, a, uh, a junior mint candy. Uh, okay, this time no boffing in my patient. The patient is invisible. All of this for a tattoo? I'm not done yet. Be patient. Yikes, he has two hearts. We're going to need a jackhammer now. Rintero said, I thought we were going to the theater, not the operating theater. Medical call center, misunderstand operators are standing by. Operating to remove the patient's wallet. Uh, what's that thing? How did you swallow that? There it is, the gas bag. Uh, I was just kidding, I'm really not a brain surgeon. Operating on a monkey pox patient. Oops, wrong patient. And we'll end with Logan5 said, I'm not confident of a surgeon with glasses. Well, I think they all have glasses. Uh, okay, let's see. George. George said, for photo inside an operating room. My caption is, Mrs. Harper left a big sign that said, don't forget to take out all the tools you use on me. Okay. Uh, okay, photo number two. Hold on, hold on. Before we go photo number two, um, yep. I want to show you this. Okay. What you do nowadays? Ah, I see you have the machine that goes bing! The machine that goes bing. It's a, it's a favorite thing of mine. Uh, okay, that was it? Oh, that was it. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, photo number two from George Davis is... Wow. We're outdoors, and it's an old beat-up stove with a lot of crap on top of it. Okay, it's a discarded stove with 
empty flower pots and pots and pans everywhere. But it's whatever you want it to be, okay? Beat up old stove. Redacted said, it's the Gizwiz Outdoor Kitchen. Oh, a lot of people. The Disneyland Kitchen. In this kitchen, we have the freshest vegetables. Dr. Mon said, my kitchen after remodeling, caveman cooking, home on the range. This is the green room. Mama never cleans up the kitchen. This is what I meant when I asked for a roomier kitchen. They are going very fast. This Airbnb doesn't look like the listing said it would. Throw out the pots and pans with the sink. The kitchen on Kitchen Nightmares, potting table, my new potting shed, cooking show and reruns. It's your mama's stove. Get your hands off me, you donned unwashed primates. It's raining pots and pans. Hillbilly kitchen. Trust me, fruits and vegetables are fresh here. Stuff we couldn't fit in the moving truck. A kitchen under a bridge in downtown L.A. In my new kitchen, I'm going green. Martha Stewart's garage sale. Actually, she just had one last week. Let me warm that up. Bobby's first kitchen, uh, Bobby's first outdoor kitchen. Newest outdoor kitchen concept. And we'll end with Martron. Applebee's kitchen cleaned up. Okay. Someone doesn't like Applebee's. Uh, George said, uh, for the photo of the old wood stove, my caption is, besides making great tasting meals, these stoves make the kitchen nice and toasty to be in. Uh, okay, photo three. Photo three is a man... I don't know if he's making those bracelets or selling bracelets. Anyway, it's a. Uh, it's it looks a craft to me like shop. he's reading the newspaper. Yeah, it does look like he's reading the newspaper. A craft shop where he has tons of, I guess, homemade or handmade bracelets. And <laughs> there's a fish clock or a fish with a clock in it, in it on the side of his desk. A crafty kind of place. Um, Logan finds that at the Goodwill store they have Easy Bake Ovens brand new. Checking his SD sales. We put clocks in everything's belly. I wonder what time it is. I'll get right on that. Old man making junk. I got plenty of stock to take a day off. Minding the store. Says here, Nixon's dead. Studying woodworking from a newspaper. Checking his ad to sell his junk shop. Now, where did I put that? Where did I put that fish clock? Waiting on the outcome of that surgery. Oh, that's very funny. He's a very crafty guy. Should have been a musician. Checking whether where he's going to be making money on his eBay auction. I'm the original maker. Giuseppe creating Pinocchio before the flea market opens. <laughs> N4B says, paper says Gizwiz stock is trending up. Apple's new industrial smart bracelet. Guy needs an internet connection. Is that a fish with a clock in its stomach or a clock with a fish in its stomach? Time to make a trip to the porn shop. And we'll end with Gensman, damn gas prices. Where are the tourists? Uh, let's see. George says, for man sitting at workbench, my caption is, all I have to do is tighten one more screw, Mr. Jensen, and your watch will be ready for you. Okay. Uh, okay, photo four. Wow. That is a pristine train station. The Berlin. It says Berlin. Hoffen, 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 Hoff. Station. With, it, it's very funny. Because <laughs> it's, it's a gorgeous station with not one single person or train. And, uh, All that's, right, that's, whatever that's, you that's, want to...
Hopped Benhoff. Ha, hopped Benhoff. There's only three syllables. Hopped Benhoff. Hoff Benhoff. And I think the Hoff is a, uh, Benhoff is like, you know, Hoff is like house. So Benhoff is like train house, let's say. So wow. this is the Hopped Benhoff. I have no idea what wow. I'm saying. <laughs> I'm making that up. It's Berlin half and half. It's like a creaming thing. Uh, please show me track six and seven eights. Train station on track to make no dollars this year. No people, no trash. Finally finished the bathroom remodel. Train station during Oktoberfest. So that's very funny. People move and moved all the people. Where's the snack bar? This is not the LA train station. This is when trains run on time. COVID victims convention, wet floor, local bond, model railroad station. I don't think so, but could be. Uh, these new bike lanes are insane. New train is so fast you can't see them go by. Another, they're all at Oktoberfest, day after. Everyone aboard the train. Uh, where are the people that, this, where are the people, did they get monkeypox? Train station COVID edition. Dick's new outdoor train station. Results of COVID-19. No one is ever late or early. Where's the train? Hoffelhoff, Hasselhoff. Lockdown everywhere. And we'll end with Bill who says, you took the train, but you didn't put it back. All righty. George says, my caption for a look inside the Berlin train station is, I was in this glass-covered railroad station in 1982 during a heavy downpour, and it kept everybody dry and warm. Uh, okay. Photo 5. Photo 5 is a cute little kid with a cap. And I don't know. I don't know what kind of a... Is that a smile? A, myster, a mysterious look? Uh, maybe want. mischievous. Mischievous. Yeah, it looked like he just did something. It's whatever you want. Little kid, red hat, off to the side. Little Rascal's casting call. Uh, not telling you where I hid the car keys. John, Johnny Jet is a kid. Okay, Boomer, I'm going to be the invisible train engineer. I didn't do it. Whatever. Yeah, tell me about it. I won't tell Mom. How about you? Okay, I'll wear the hat, but hurry up and take the picture. Enough of that, Governor. I hate buttons. You said ice cream for lunch. I didn't do it. Hey, where's my train? Benjamin Button at 90. Oh, that's very funny. Uh, where's the musical? I hope they don't recognize me with this hat on. No, I haven't seen it. OMG Chad, as a child. Well, looks like I missed the train. Since when do they have double button shirt pockets? Do they? Uh, is this your hat? They made me wear this stupid hat. When with Martron, I'm going to stand right here until I get a popsicle. Uh, okay. George says, for a young boy wearing his new hat, my caption is, my uncle bought this red hat for me for my seventh birthday, and it goes great with this patterned shirt. Okay, six of six. Oh, how sweet. It's a cat doing a, a love hug against a puppy or a dog. Cat rubbing up against a dog, and the dog is liking it. Very cute picture. Uh, cat rubbing up against a dog, and the dog likes it. No animals were harmed in the making of this photo. Um, puppy covered in catnip. For friends to life, uh, I'm giving them you my sand fleas. Must be somewhere they, ha must be something they have pickpockets a lot. Oh, it must be the other picture. Uh, could you drool a bit? I need gel for my hair. Cat talking dog out of its dinner. 
<laughs> That's very funny. Cat meat marking her territory. Best furry friends forever. Uh, thanks for changing my litter. I just marked you. Blind cat looking for a hot dog. Welcome to my litter box. I told you dogs don't like cats. Head bump. Reign of cats and dogs. Puppy love. Another one. Thanks for cleaning my kitty litter. Where does that come from? Uh, hold still dog. I got an itch. Pets are fearless. When can I open my eyes? You're it. Does hunt get fits in my homework? Cat practicing for treat cuddle. This is why they love me best. I hear the ocean. <laughs> Cat dog tipping. I mock you so I find you when I'm back. And we'll go with Red uh, Rededict, who says another use for duct tape. Uh, okay, uh, George said, young cat rubbing up against his roommate is how George describes this. My caption is, thanks, Duke, for chasing that neighborhood dog away. I owe you some more rubs. And now, fun New York City facts from George Davis. There is a birth in New York City, every blank minutes. All right. There is someone born in New York City every blank minutes in New York City. Um, That'll be a lot, right? Every I'm gonna go with five minutes. I'm gonna throw out some of the paper and then never have a piece. Um all right, Jam would be what's your answer? There's a blank a birth in New York City every blank minutes. Fifteen. Every fifteen minutes? Okay, looking up. Uh, my answer is every five minutes. Raven fifteen minutes. 12 minutes. Toad Slot said, there's a birth every dang minute. Uh, six minutes along, <laughs> six minutes along the traffic and weather. Uh, George said, there is a birth in New York City every 4.4 minutes. Wow. <laughs> um, oh. The Empire State Building gets struck by lightning how many times a year? The Empire State Building gets struck by lightning how many times a year? It's got to be a lot, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Isn't the top of the Empire State Building a giant lightning rod? Um, uh, all right, I'm going with 400. I'm going with 100. 25, 2,000, 1,000, 104. Jim, would be what's your answer? Empire State Building? I'll go with 1,000. With 1,000? Oh, okay, I'm going with 100. You're going with 1,000. Bill in Michigan says 15 times. Dr. Mom said that's what killed King Kong. <laughs> I think she saw a different movie than I saw. Yeah, I know. Salty Corn Bar says, Zero, King Kong blocked it. Um, every time Faye Ray rubs her feet on the carpet. All right. I, 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 Damn it, B, it's a thousand. I'm a hundred. Uh, Empire State Building gets hit by lightning. Oh, this can't be right. According to George, the Empire State Building gets hit by lightning 23 times a year. Oh, uh, That what? sounds... That's interesting. I guess uh, some of us thought it got hit a lot more. <laughs> that sounds low, doesn't it? Anyway, that's what George said, 23 times a year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
Joy, I don't, I don't know if I trust some of your facts this week. The next one is not a question, but uh, it, it's a fun fact. Albert Einstein's brain and eyeballs are kept in a safe deposit box in New York City. I don't know. And the other fact is, oh, this I believe. New Yorkers bite more people than sharks do in a year. New, <laughs> New Yorkers bite more people than sharks do in a year. Okay. Um, Oh, oh, George ends with, on a scale of 1 to 10 chat room, you guys are 11. Nice job. Stay happy. See you soon. Bye, George. George, thank you so much. Well, you know, Dick, we have one more photo. Oh, we do? Yeah, this is a explanation of something you told us about last week. You sent me the photo early in the week. Um, oh, oh, okay. Oh, yes, yes. And yes. numbers, and now we know what the numbers are because we can see the numbers. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I talked about Mad once printing four different covers. I uh, thought it was very, very clever, and this is, this is what they look like. So if you were at the newsstand... It wasn't until, until you thumbed through to the fifth copy of Mad that you would see the numbers repeat. And so it was a very elaborate thing. I think yeah, they were the, printed on... collated. I mean, you, clearly they were printed in four batches, and then the batches had to be collated somehow. Yes, exactly. And then there had to be a note in there to the newsstand dealer is that this, this is a series of a joke... Does, so does please, you have to display them the way they're packaged? Yeah. Ex exactly. Exactly. Don't take them out and arbitrarily mix them up. <laughs> it was very clever. It was very, very clever. Thanks for remembering that. Um, okay. Thank you for finding the picture. <laughs> oh, uh, um, I got that from Mad Cover Site. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I had like ten seconds to find it last week and. I'm glad oh, you that, that's I, okay. I'm glad you that's took the okay. time and now we all know exactly yeah. what those numbers look like. <laughs> one, one day I'm going to get Doug uh, Guilford to be a chat room celebrity of the week. Uh, he started the Mad Cover site just because he was a Mad fan and it turned out that everything in the world at, at Mad we have a library of all past issues of MAD, and it was in my office. And it was a nightmare to try and find. So Doug has every issue, every, if you go in there and type in my name, everything I've ever written, if you type in an audit, if you type in my name, and then you click like Dick D. Bartolo with, then it shows every artist who illustrated something I wrote. I mean, it, it, it's like a, an incredible thing. The power of and modern one, relational databases. Yes, exactly. And I believe at one point, Warner Brothers gave him some money because he was just going to stop doing it. And I, think, I think one had depended on it also. Oh, that so is that awesome. Really, that is awesome. Yeah. He, it, it's just astounding. Just astounding. Reminds me of a um, modern band. My band, the band I like, you can, uh, they have a page where you can list the shows that you've gone to. And then they'll give you a database of all the songs you've seen, the gaps between the songs, the most played songs you have, you know, all the stats that you can derive from all the shows that you've seen. Because once they know what show you've seen, they know what songs you've seen, what order and stuff like that. It's very cool use of a database. It's great. It's great. Oh, we looked up old issues of Mad a lot. We would say, um, should we do that thing? And someone said, isn't that the same title that we used on so-and-so? Someone go find it. Well, in the past, you had to go through <laughs> back issues, but not with Mad cover site. Uh, Mad, Mad, Mad right now is nothing but repeats. Do you remember the first article? Yeah, my first article was uh, Mad number 69. And it was 
uh, commercials, Imperial Margin commercials. Remember that? The guy tasted the margin, or anybody tasted the margin. Do, 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 do. Yes, yeah, a crown appeared on their head. And the, uh, the premise was, how come every time they talk to someone in a supermarket, they're normal people? And it was just like nutty people that would be in the commercials if they weren't editing them so much. And I remember after they bought the article, Nick Meglin called me and said, well, you know, Al Jaffe also did something with uh, in, uh, Imperial Margin commercials. So we're going to put you in with Al Jaffe as <laughs> artwork. I said, oh, my God, yeah. So was, were you in elementary school or junior high when you did that? I'm sorry? Elementary school or junior high when you submitted yeah, that in article? High, high school. Oh. I, I probably about oh. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, I went to the dentist once. Oh, <laughs> Marcus said, I went to a dentist once, and a crown appeared on my tooth <laughs> for about two grand, three grand. And it had wow, gold. all these it mad memories. <laughs> I stopped eating pizza because of a mad joke about squishy pizza slices. Oh, I'm so sorry, Logan Five. That that really breaks my heart. I'm sure everyone commiserates with you. What a sad thing. <laughs> um, anyway, okay. Oh, you know, it was so funny. Only because she thought this story was funny about uh, at Goodson Todd, we were going to have a meeting and people were coming in late and it didn't apply to me. Uh, I remembered another time. I, I guess my boss at Goodson Todman liked my work or something because Howard Felsher was producer of Match Game. And one day I said, Howard, is it okay if I leave at four today? We work 10 to six. I said, Howard, is it okay if we leave at four today? And Howard said, come into my office. I go, oh, geez, this is going to be good. He said, sit down. I go, Howard, It'd be great, but I don't have to leave at four. And Howard said, if you want to leave two hours early, you just do it. You never ask me if you can. You want to leave early? You have to leave early? Just say, Howard, I'm going. So I know you're not here. <laughs> so anyway, I had great bosses at Goodson Todman. And Howard was also the one who said, why are you writing the match game? Tell Mark you want to be a producer. You will make a ton of money. Writing is a dead-end game here. You'll just go up $100 at a time. You producer, you'll make thousands. I said, Howard, I like writing the match game. I said, and also, if you're a producer, don't you have to hire and fire people? And, and, and take it? responsibility? <laughs> yes, yes. And how is it? Oh, well, there is one other drawback, I'll tell you. Goodson pays incredible salaries to producers. However, if at four in the morning he can sleep, it will not be unusual for him to call you up and say, you know, we should talk about different ways we can branch out the company or why don't we do this on to tell the truth? He said, so you're sort of owned by him, but you're making a lot of money. Anyway, neither to stay. I just stayed a writer, which was perfectly good for me. I want to be a producer. <laughs> I did not have a, a mustache in high school. Um, okay, we're going to do some logo, logo. What part of the body does whack, does whack a wax, whack a wax make cherry flavored wax candy? Oh my God. <laughs> uh, okay. So oh, wait a it's minute. It's a body part, a candy body part made of wax from this company. Is that what I'm to understand? Yes. Yes. I, I just remember. 
<laughs> the naughty bits. I think I think the chat room remembers too. <laughs> They do. Oh my God! Yeah, until the chat room said it, I could not. I I couldn't imagine. <laughs> Sue, the writer said, "I don't want to know." Okay. Um, what candy brand packages flavor changing jawbreakers under the everlasting gobstopper? These questions are. May, well, you knew the other one. Chat room, I have no idea what this is. Which candy brand packages flavor-changing jawbreakers under the name Everlasting Gobstopper? Holy cow! Did you know that, Jamba B? Uh, if I thought about it, I might have, but the chat room was pretty quick to clue me in. Boy. You know, and, and, and there's kind of a clue in the name because all the, the Wonka stuff has got the weird names. Oh, what candy bar sounds like the day you get paid? <laughs> Easy one. Easy one. What candy bars? <laughs> uh, pink slip chews. Dead broke. Snickers. What? Yeah, it's payday. A favorite of mine. I like a chewy peanut candy bar. Which one of these has not appeared on the top of a Pez dispenser? Betsy Ross, Uncle Sam, Albert Einstein, Daniel Boone. Which of those four people never appeared on the top of a Pez dispenser? <laughs> I like that. Only like three people are selecting from the names that I gave. Jammer B, your answer. Which of these never appeared on a Pez dispenser? Betsy uh, Ross, Uncle Sam, Einstein, Daniel Boone. I'll go with Betsy Ross. You're going with who? Betsy Ross. No, it was Einstein. Ah, ah, ah. Jeffrey Dahmer. Uh, uh, um, okay. Mm -mm. Uh, da -da. Let's see. We have one more here. Oh, we did this, right? The brand? Um, Do we do this? I what think, brand is, is this? Is that White Castle? It is. Yeah, the, yeah. I, I, think know. We, okay. I, I think we did. But uh, remind me. What are the questions? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, what does White Castle call its most loyal and passionate customers? I don't. I don't remember that. So maybe we've not. Well, I don't either. I don't. This is bizarre. Let's see if anybody can get this. What does White Castle... Also, there's plenty of room for jokes here. What does White Castle call its most loyal and passionate customers? Dead from a heart attack. Suckers. Crackheads. Your Royal Highness. Slider Kings. Fat Cadivers, late for dinner. Oh my God, someone knows. Wipers. My best friend's brother. Drawbridges, no. Cheese knickers, drunks. All right, some people have it. 
Jammer B, do you know what White Castle calls their most loyal and passionate customers? Uh, I do not. I, I Somebody in the <laughs> chat, chat room said surfs. I, I thought that was funny. No. no I, I don't know. We now have at least three correct answers. I don't know how. They're called cravers. Gives one, I see. <laughs> Who knew? Who knew? Oh, no one's going to know this, I don't think. What building located on North Michigan Avenue in Chicago looks similar to the White Castle logo? Now, looking at the answer, I realize they do look alike. But from the question, I don't know if you can get it. What building located on North Michigan Avenue in Chicago looks similar to the White Castle logo? <laughs> White Castle Restaurant? No. Sears Tower? No. No, but some people have it. Willis Tower? Winfrey Studio? The County Jail? Kaminsky Park? Now they're getting further away. Uh, uh, um, okay, uh, Jamma B, any guess? I don't have a guess, but I uh, looked it up. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, I looked it up on a computer that isn't hooked up to the uh, TriCaster, so I can't show you. Ah, so uh, if, if you give me a moment, I will I will pull it up on the other tri uh, the other computer. Oh, okay. Okaru has it. Okay. And Okaru, I think you sent me how to pronounce your name, but <laughs> I didn't print it out. Uh, uh, so. Jamma B is going to show us the building that inspired the White Castle logo. You know, it's not some bank tower, according to this card. Maybe it was at one time. Not White Castle headquarters. Mm -mm -mm. I think this is it. I'm not... Okay. Uh... It kind of looks you like know, it. I, it's a, no, it's like a I don't. I, the, the, you know, I'll, I'll give water, you the answer, and you. Water tower, right? It, yes, it was inspired by the Chicago water tower. Huh. That's so weird. Oh, maybe it what? It says water tower, but it looks like a. Chicken oh, tower. maybe is that it? Maybe it was a water tower earlier, and that yes, was at a one rock. at one point that could be. That could be. Anyway. What John Travolta? Go ahead. I was just very interesting. I did not know, but then I'm not the White Castle. There's no White Castle burgers around here, and there's no. And it's not around Chicago, so I wouldn't be expected to know. Which John Travolta movie features a group of friends visiting a White Castle restaurant? I know this movie. I do do not remember this scene. John Travolta movie where a group of him and a group of friends visit a White Castle restaurant. Uh, I guess I guess no one else remembered it. No. Oh no, okay. According to this card, it was Saturday Night Fever. <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, mm -mm. All right, let's do a. Let me see what. Oh, we're going to do our snappy answer thing here. Oh, we'll do our. Uh, uh, um, okay. Wait, I don't want to lose my picture. Okay. We're going to do our Guinness Book of World Records. All right, so you're going to give me how many gallons, okay? The largest jug of soft drink was 11 feet 11 inches in a circumference of 25 feet. How many people does it take to pour? Uh, yeah, you're right. How many gallons was in it, okay? 
June 8, 2008, a jug that measured 11 feet 11 inches and was 25 feet in circumference was filled with soda, I don't, a, a soft drink. How many gallons did it take? Uh oh, shit, I looked at the answer. Oh. Gallons, yeah, answering gallons. Wow. Somebody got damn close. 8,000 gallons? <laughs> One, the rest was filler. 26 gallons, the jug was thicker than it seemed. I refuse to do math on a holiday weekend. Jammer B, what's your guess? A jug, 11 feet, 11 inches, 25 foot in circumference, holds how many gallons of soft drink? I'll say 1,000. Uh, the correct answer is, and someone has it up there, uh, the correct answer is um, 2,456. And I saw a 2,400 go by. So that's pretty good. And a uh, lot of soda. Uh, that is a lot of soda. Um, all right, I'm going to get a drink of soda here. So let's do some. We have any more beer commercials? It uh, looks like we, we have, uh, oh, no, we got, we've got like uh, 13 minutes of beer commercials left. <laughs> oh, well, let's do like three, let, let's do, let's do like three or four minutes of beer commercials. For me. Blatt's for me. Blatt's for me. Blatt's beer is sweeping the country. First in Milwaukee, because it's first in taste. Blatt's for me. Blatt's for me. Wherever you go, folks are saying... Blatt's for me. It started in Milwaukee, where Blatt's is the largest selling beer. And now, from coast to coast, folks are saying Blatt's for me. Yes, with smart people like these, Blatt's is first in taste. They find particular pleasure in that light, distinctive Blatz flavor. And because it's first in taste, Blatz is fast becoming first choice everywhere. In fact, Blatz is so good that after just one bottle, folks agree... Blatz, for I'm me. I'm drunk. Try this wonderful Blatz beer yourself and you'll agree. B-L-A-T-Z. Sam Blatz. Anybody know if that still exists? Anybody from Milwaukee? Hello. What would you say if you had to describe the taste of a ripe strawberry or a sizzling steak? Impossible, of course. It just can't be done. It's the same with really? trying to describe the matchless flavor of Schlitz it beer. It can't be done. Instead, There's so much we crap in there. We don't know what to call People say about it. the taste of the world's best-loved beer. Unlike olives, you don't have to learn to like Schlitz. Its clean, refreshing taste wins you from the very first sip. If you like beer, you'll love Schlitz. At last, a and beer that like tastes olives, as good as it looks. You won't. And it not only tastes good, there's no unwelcome aftertaste. If you like beer, you'll love Schlitz. Schlitz is dry without being bitter. Oh my God! Bliss, like it says in the ad, it's brewed with just the kiss of the hops. My God. Yes, if you like beer, you'll love Schlitz. Yes, that's right, friends. Everywhere you go, people say good things about the taste of Schlitz. If you travel a lot, you'll find that the matchless flavor of Schlitz never varies. Always uniform, always mellow, and, and good no matter where you buy it. Rear screen but of course, my window. you still have to taste Schlitz yourself to find out 
how really good and agreeable to your taste a beer can be. No wonder Schlitz is the beer that made Milwaukee famous. If you like beer, you'll love Schlitz. So enjoy Schlitz soon, won't you? And now, back to our Schlitz Playhouse of Stars. I would do one more. The champion seems to be moving about like a gigantic cat. There's a right and a left and a hard right and a left and a hard right to the jaw. The champion was rocked by that one. And there's the bell. Ah, they don't make champions like they used to, do they? That's true, that's true. I remember when I was a little mug. My father took me to see a real champion fight. Timothy Sullivan. He went 32 rounds against a kangaroo. A kangaroo? What kind of fight is that? Oh, it was a fearful battle. They were picking fur off Sullivan for days afterward. Bartender, fill up this mug with some kangaroo, uh, Utica Club beer. Maybe it'll shape him up. A kangaroo. At least there's one thing that's still made the old way. Utica Club beer with natural bubbles. Find my place, Schultz. I'll be back for the next round. What shall it be? Mm, what shall it be? the bell for me. I didn't eat it. That like was the weirdest commercial. Smooth, premium beer. Take one sip and I'll bet a dollar. You'll agree with us and the bell for me. Mitchell rings the bell. Mm, 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 rings the bell for me. All right. Is this a Christmas beer? I don't know. I, n I never heard of that, Bryn. Um, okay, we're going to do um, I'm Not Saying You're Stupid. Oh my God! I've not Jamma B might. In how many years, according to scientists, will the sun die? Uh, I have a guess. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, I just know it's probably more than five. Well, that's exactly five, in, five, uh, five with a B. In how many years, yeah, according to room, scientists? Will the sun die, according to scientists? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You guys are good. Like, I mean, I haven't looked at the answer, but these sound like sensible answers. Uh, <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> Long enough to make it irreverent to us. It depends on global warming. I'd give it three years. <laughs> we have a match with three years. I'm selling my solar panels now. Two hours after we pay the power bill, says Dr. Mom. It's halfway through its life. Wow. The sun won't come out tomorrow. All right, Jamie B., what was your guess? Uh, five billion. Five billion. All right. I'm going with two billion for no reason whatsoever. In how many years, according to scientists, will the sun die? What was your answer, Jemma B? Five billion. Uh, uh, uh. Five billion. A lot of people were close. Give That's or take excellent. a billion. That's excellent. How many diapers does a baby use in its first year of life. How many diapers does a baby use in their first year of life? Uh, you know, uh, never having a kid. Right, I'm going to go with a thousand. Too many, five million, one thousand, 
1250. All right, Jamma B, how many diapers does a baby use in their first year? I'm going with a thousand. A thousand sounds good to me too. And what, what is yours? A thousand. A thousand, okay. Uh, uh, uh. How many diapers does a baby use on its first year of life? Oh my goodness. According to this card, way more than that. According to this card, 22,750. Wow, that's like, that's, that's, all, like that's almost, that, that's a nine day. a day. Well, babies are babies. Wow, holy cow. Oh, this, oh. What year was the Empire State Building completed? What, what year was construction of the Empire State Building completed? Boy. Um, I gotta guess. 36, 32, 29, 34, 36, not yet finished. Boy, next week. Uh, never completed. I'm going to go with 1938. Oh, yeah, Danielle said it had to be before the King Kong movies. Oh, King Kong was 36, wasn't it? All right, I'm going with 1935, <laughs> if, not, if King Kong was 1936. Jamma B? 1930. 1930, okay. What year was construction in the Empire State Building completed? Oh, 1931. Gumby got it, along with some others. Okay. Nine, uh, okay. And our final question. You know, I forgot when this game was copyrighted, but what percentage of our lifetime do we spend in front of a screen? What percentage of our lifetime do we spend in front of a screen? I forgot. I used to have the... I think the game was copyrighted like in 2011, but I'm not sure. What percentage of our lifetime? Boy. It really depends on how old you are. Um, all right, I got mine. Jamma B? I'm going to say 30%. 30%. Okay, I'm in with 25%. Man to the Clown is 42. Caesar, 65. Giz, 165. Wow. Gumby, 66. They're way up there. What percentage of our lifetime do we spend in front of a screen? What was your answer, Jimmy B? Three zero, thirty percent. Thirty percent. According to this card, I'm trying to find somebody who's pretty close to this. Uh, salty corn bar. It is forty-one percent. Forty-one percent. Uh, um, okay, we're going to do a stupid answer, and then I'll call Dennis, and we'll do match game. Okay, I'll cover the car, uh, Al's answer. Okay, these are snappy answers to stupid question. The stupid question is, a lady's looking at a woman who has identical boys, okay? They're dressed identical, they look identical, and the woman says, are they twins? And to that stupid question, your snappy answer is whatever. Okay, lady looking at identical twins and asking, are they twins? 
No, you need glasses. No, they're clones. No, you have double vision. No, they're Siamese uh, quad quadtuplets. No, they're yours now. No, they're puppets. One is a puppet. No, you have double vision. No, they're mirror images. No, they're f uh, brothers from another mother. No, they're reflections. They're clones. You drank too much? No, you buy one, you get one free. Oh, that's funny. Lady, there's one baby. You drunk? Uh, one is real, one is virtual. No, they were born 10 minutes apart. No, the outfits were buy one, get one free. No, the air in here makes you see double. No, identical engineers. No, my legal team. Um, no, we're triplets. Where's the third one? Uh, no, they're, uh, they're going fast. On the inside, they're totally different from each other. Uh, no, they're, no they're, they're triplets. Are we missing one? They're, no, they're robots. No, we're standing in front of a mirror. It's an air and a spare. No, I'll have what, no, but I'll have what you're drinking. No, they're identical, unrelated people. Um, no, they're not even related. No, they're White Castle sliders. No, it's just one kid. No, I own a copy machine repair shop. They're doppelgangers. No, one of them is a ventriloquist. And we'll end with Swift Bird. Yes, but they have different dads. Oh, nobody picked okay. my answer. Oh, what was your answer? I want to say Pepper's Ghost. Nobody said Pepper's Ghost. Your... Pepper's Ghost. No, oh, one, one's, Pepper's... A, one's Pepper's Ghost. Oh. All right, here's Al Jaffe's answer. Are they twins? No, they're identical strangers. No, they're nine years <laughs> apart. Stunting, smoking stunted the older one's growth. No, it's only one child. Who needs an eye? You need an eye doctor. Oh, you know what? Someone, you know, I told you I bought this book used and someone filled it in, but they have what several people in the chat room had. Are they twins? No, they're triplets. You're standing on the third one. <laughs> so whoever bought this book, I love the fact that someone bought the book and filled it out. Oh, that, that's, that was the last one they filled out. I guess they got tired. Uh, okay, we're going to do match game. I heard Charlie Box so Dennis must... Oh, is Alex joining us? Alex is joining us. Alex is joining us. Okay. Let me get a piece of paper for Dennis. Hang on. Hello, Alex. Hello, John. Hey, Alex. Hey, Dick. Give you that, Dennis. And you have a pen? Okay. Uh, okay. Um, um, um. I just printed out a schedule for Silent Disco. Jamie B, do you know what Silent Disco is? Yes. Okay. Um. Silent Disco is three disc jockeys. Okay, you go to a place, and they do it at Lincoln Center, it's, and it's very bizarre. As you walk down there, there are 300 people disco dancing, and there's not a sound, okay? And so you pick out, you just hit a thing on your headphone to pick the disc jockey you want, and then you listen to their playlist. And then if someone wants to dance with you, you see what color their headset is and then you just lift your cup so you can see what color yours is and you dial yours until you get the same color as theirs and then you can dance together it's great fun um oh my goodness oh this is like from one of the from one of the pictures george sent us the school teacher said most of my students bring an apple but the surgeon's son just put a blank on my desk <laughs> The school teacher said, most of my students bring me an apple, but the surgeon's son just put a blank on my desk. Oh, an Adam's apple. That's very funny. A scalpel, a kidney, a brain, gallbladder, gallstone, 
Uh, oh, so fast, so fast. Uh, heart, liver, scalpel, heart, gallbladder, gallstone, heart, 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 pillbox, splint, liver, kidney stone, used sponge, business card, a jar, <laughs> uh, urine sample, Applebee's gift card, tumor, oh my God. Um, okay, Alex, we're going to start with you. School teacher said, most of my students bring me an apple, but the surgeon's son just put a blank on my desk, and you said, a heart. You got a lot of matches. Jamma B, not an apple, but a face mask. Uh, I think I got one match. A kidney. And... Then it's not sure how to spell. Oh, put a syringe, right? Yeah, syringe. I think you got a match. Um, <laughs> as Carl was blowing up the balloon, he he cupped. The balloon went in his mouth and came out as blank. <laughs> this got played on air, so. Family friendly, if you can. Oh, oh great, Gumby. Was Carl was blowing up a balloon, he hiccuped. Balloon went in his mouth, came out as blank. Uh, uh, uh. Keister. Oh, okay. You know, you could probably say Keister on air. Uh, at least I got a match. I see one match. Charlie, not yet. We're just starting. Wife's ear, wife's nose, ears, tear duct, tailpipe, belly button, took us, rear end, bum. Uh, okay, then so we're going to start with you. As Carl was going, uh, blowing up his balloon, he hiccuped. Dennis is saying we're growing up here so you can imagine uh carl was blowing up a balloon he cupped and the balloon went in his mouth and came out his he just said the word you did get matches there were keister keister is what we say on air oh okay um i got several matches came out his ear jamma b it came out his nose you got a lot of matches and Alex, the balloon came out his nose. Got some matches too. Charlie, no, no, no. We have like three more questions. Just stop it. Um, at the circus, the old ringmaster said to the new ringmaster, remember, son, no matter how tired you get, never take a nap under the blank. Old ringmaster to the new ringmaster. Remember, no matter how tired you get, don't take a nap under the blank. Oh, I got the definitive answer. Under the fat lady, bearded lady, tiger cage, pinball machine? Um, okay, Alex, we're going to start with you. Charlie, not yet. No, not yet. At the circus, old ringmaster said to the new one, remember, son, no matter how tired you get, never take a nap under the elephants. Yes. Jammer B, never nap under the... Oh, fat lady, you got matches. Uh, I got matches under the elephant. It seemed too easy. Then it said elephant. Um, okay. Beverly Hills is so ritzy. How Beverly is it? <laughs> it's so ritzy. You can't get into the unemployment office unless you have a blank. Beverly Hills is so ritzy. You can't get into the unemployment office unless you have a blank. All right, this could be tricky. I'm writing a, a first and second answer. Let me look up. 
Oh, agent is excellent. Referral, a lawyer. Wow. Reservation, a resume, a Tesla. I got zero matches. Neither one of my... A letter from your agent? Oh, my God. All right, well, I'll go first since I got no matches. Publicist. I was going to write agent, and then I thought two showbiz, but would have been better. Uh, Beverly Hills so rich that you can't get into the unemployment office unless you have a job. And my quest second answer was a tuxedo. Okay, Dennis? Uh, unless you have... Oh, <laughs> You can't get into the unemployment office unless you have a big bank account. And Jamma B, you can't get in unless you have a job. Yo! Very good. And Alex, you can't get into the unless you have an oh a lot of a lot of matches. Charlie, one more question and then you can jump up. Um uh, uh, um. Oh, okay. Mr. Periwinkle. Old man Periwinkle. I have to uh, put that in. Charlie, you're next after this question. Old man Periwinkle said, I just enlisted in the old folks army. In the old folks army, you get a medal just for blanking. Old man Periwinkle. I just enlisted in the old folks army. In our army, you get a medal just for blanking. Oh, I got it. All right. All right. I got matches. Okay, we're going to start with me. Old man Periwinkle said, I enlisted in the old folks army. In our army, you get a medal just for breathing. Uh, Alex, in the old man's army, you get a medal just for whizzing. <laughs> Jamma B, you get a medal just for waking up. Oh, oh you, you match Martron just going by. And Dennis said, oh, Dennis also breathing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, he's going berserk here. It's time for, come on, Charlie, come on. Up, 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 Charles, up, 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 Charlie. Oh, boy, now he's here. Yeah, yeah, well, Charlie, look out of your audience. Good job. He's so funny. He can't wait to get on. Look at the people. So now what? Now what am I doing here? Yeah. There you go. All right. Look at the. Yeah. Look at. Yeah. He said, Yeah, did you show my video? <laughs> he loves his new bed, I'll tell you that. Okay. You're something, Charles. You are some kind of dog. Yeah, you have a lot of fans in the chat room. Now, hang on. Hang on. We're going to get you down in a minute. Okay. All right. Uh, the Flying Nun of Dogs. <laughs> Charlie's accommodations provided by Wag Island Beach Resort. It is indeed Sir Wags a lot. Um, all right, chat room. This is great fun. You guys are, are great. Um, Gizwiz this coming Thursday, and then next Saturday we'll be back for this. So thanks for watching regular old-fashioned Gizfiz. Regular old-fashioned Gizfiz is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman, Dick D. Bartolo, Dennis Wonderland. Charlie the Dog, Jamma B, Alec Gumpel, Beatmaster, Scooter X, Sweetbird, Milkman, Ranger Rick, Magoo, Season, Mr. Dave, Tech Lady, Sly One, Rufus, Becky, D. Claire, Strange, Mike B, 
Graveyard Tuba, Jim Tez, Mandy the Clown, Logan 5ZX, Toad Sloth, Tech Dino, Okaru, Gumby, and Loquacious. Brought to you by Turtle Wax. Remember, it's not just for turtles anymore. See you next week. All right. Hey, have a, a great holiday weekend, everybody. Alex, take care. See you, Dick. See you, John. Thank you, Alex. Okay. Thank you, Dick. Thank you, Jammer B and Alex and Chat Room and Beatmaster and Scooter X and... And all those names else. we just listed. And Dr. Mom. Uh, Thank uh, you, very Dick. Very good. Okay. Uh, bye. Bye, Dr. Mom. Everybody stay cool or warm, whichever is appropriate for your situation today. Bye-bye. <laughs>